Pavlich flies oh! the skipper. Still going long. And his second goal. That's a long kick. Hasn't got the distance. I tell you what. Ball spills. Pavlich. Can he sink it? He's kicked the goal. And he punches the air. Side steps. Looks up. Man, no one in the square. Pavlich could go for it. It could roll. He keeps it low. It skids. It rolls. It tumbles. That is a beauty. He's got five. Mark Johnson dives in. Shoots the handball. Back to Pavlich. He's off the bench. Looking at number three. Waltz is inside 50. Matthew. Well, Matthew, welcome to AFL.com.au and thanks for your time this afternoon. Tell us about life under Ross Lyon at, uh, at Freo. Oh, look, it's been, been great. It's, you know, seven months or so in now and I guess after the initial shock for everyone, um, you know, it seems such a long time ago now and, you know, so much has occurred both within the pre-season and now, you know, 10 or 11 rounds into the season. It's, it's, um, it's been really enjoyable. Um, there's been, you know, a reasonable shift in the way we do things, but essentially um, it has been about getting into to work um, all those seven long months ago and particularly the pre-season there's a large focus on you know our game plan and evolving that and, and getting the guys really fit and available and uh, entering the season with as much confidence as we can and you know halfway mark now I think you know we're reasonably well placed are we perfect no we're not but I think we're building towards that. The St Kilda boys said back in 2007 that it took them nearly a season to adjust to what Ross wanted to do. It didn't happen after one game and it didn't happen even for half a season. Do you feel it's the same with you guys? You're still learning or you're sort of there and you know his expectations and what the game plan is now? I think we certainly know what the expectation and the game plan is. Um, are we executing it you know, by the letter of the law? Probably not. And that's you know, reflective of where we are currently sitting in the grander scheme of things. But um, I feel as though the, that Ross is pretty pleased with the progression that we've made and that... Um, you know, the groups certainly embraced him and the new coaching group and really got to work. You know, it was always going to take a little bit of time because there has been a, a reasonably significant shift, which I think a lot of people have sort of identified. But um, we're pleased to this point that it's a work in progress and that we're not, not too far away. Is it true when Ross uh, arrived at the club, he told you you, you were a bit too big and perhaps compared to Nick Rewalt and told you some of the stuff that uh, Rewalt did when he was at St Kilda? The conversation between he and I to do with me was more based around you know where he thinks I should play and and what that specifically looks like um, it wasn't necessarily to do with when he first arrived at St Kilda and, and with Nick. You've got a giant of the game literally in your side Aaron Sanderlands um, but sometimes your midfield stats don't uh, reflect the dominance he can sometimes give with, with hit outs and uh, work to advantage. Is that a frustration on the side that you can't often parlay that advantage into, some, into sort of goals and clearances and that sort of thing for the side? It probably is a frustration, but I think what it is, is it's a pretty good indicator of us being that work in progress. You know, we're not quite absolutely have that chemistry and on the same page. We'd love to and we're working so hard to get that, but we're not quite there. But they're building and, and we're confident that um, the hard work that's being done and, um, you know, Aaron's dominance by getting his hand on the footy can be a strong and significant advantage for us. You're six best and fairest at Freo, six all Australian jumpers, seven times leading the goal kicking. You're without question, Freo's greatest player. But you're having a lot of team success. How does that sit with you when you sort of look at your career today? Is it a frustration? How, how do you feel? Well, I don't really sit back and look at my career today. We operate in a business that is so, you know, next moment focused that it would almost be negligent for me to, you know, sit back and either smell the roses or, or look back in regret. So. I very much am in that moment as best I can and particularly as, as one of the leaders, it's, as I said, negligent if we weren't acting like that. Um, I certainly am as desperate as anyone for team success and you know, would love to round out my career in that vein, but I'm also a realist. Um, I, I understand that you know, in this game not everyone gets the fruits of the, the labour they put in and um, I feel as though I've been you know, banging my head against a brick wall for a long time and, and hopefully at some point I'll be able to get through that brick wall. But um, I, as I said, I'm a realist, so I understand that not all things end in very tough. Partially smothered by Gibson. Maine. De Boer. Hit for the live. Back to Maine. Off to Pavlik. Sell the day. Pavlik screws it around the corner. The proud South Australian 
Matthew, um, and the Crows and Porter both had nibbles at you in the past. Ever, was it ever close, ever really tempted to go back, or you've just been really content and settled at Freo the whole time? I've been on the record quite a few times now saying that, yeah, of course there was um, interest, and, and of course from my perspective there was strong consideration about um, a future you know, back home in, in South Australia, being that proud South Australian that I am. But for me, it was always an element of unfinished business of having that team success and um, you know, achieving that for the first time in Fremantle would be you know, something really special. And um, I feel as though you know, we as a group are really building towards that. And with the young list that we have that's maturing and coming along, coupled with some older players who are still playing well, um, we're, not, we're hopefully not too far away. But the focus for me was always about you know, achieving something at Fremantle for the first time. And you know, I've, always, I've sort of been brought up um, in a way that you know, if you start something and you see it's worthwhile, you think it's worthwhile, then, then see it through. And, I think that's pretty apt from where I'm at with my career. Runs beyond the wing, kicks well inside the forward 50. Over the top, under. Pavlich onto the crumb, snaps, looks pretty good. Pavlich. When you joined Freo, uh, West Coast were the kings of the city probably, uh, and Freo was sort of down there a little bit. How Do you, do you feel that's, that's changed? How do you feel you're very much the equal partner of West Coast when it comes to footy in WA? No, I think, I think there's been a significant shift um, from, you know, where where Fremantle sit in, in Western Australia. But as I said, it isn't a focus for us. Um, you know, we, we'd like to um, have the lion's share of the population going for Fremantle. And I think there has been, a, as I said, a significant shift towards that. But quite clearly, West Coast were in the competition first. We were able to get a pretty strong market share and had success. So, you know, our club's a really strong and profitable club off the field. Um, we're building towards success on the field. And, you know, I think there's a lot of Fremantle people out there that are probably just sitting back and waiting. Big discussion last few days, of course, Matthew, about uh, a second buy. The AFL would like to bring a second buy. Uh, Players Association, of which you're heavily involved, is pushing for uh, some sort of state of origin or uh, all-star game. But it might be one or the other. If you had a choice, what would uh, would you rather have the second buy or, or have some sort of all-star game at the start of the season? I'll, I'll be greedy, and so I think we can achieve both. I, I, I really have a, a strong view on that we can achieve two buys and. Um, you know, an all-star state of origin type of concept. Um, and I think that's going to be the most beneficial for the game. We don't want players resting um, in a season and we don't want players being injured, particularly our better players. So let's make sure we have some buyers in the year to um, get the guys through. If the AFL still wants a 22-24, 22 22-game, 24 round season, then I think they're going to have to, you know, at least identify that the guys are going to need a bit of time off. Um, I, I would like State of Origin more so, but I, I completely understand that there's, you know, challenges with that system. You know, state, um, South Australia, Victoria, WA, there's only three teams, really. You know, the other allies concept, you know, there are, you know, some barriers with that. But um, I think that the spectacles, you know, the best games, sorry, the best players in the game playing at one time, I think that's probably the concept. How, if it's State of Origin or if it's... The all-star, well, let, let's debate that a bit further. Where do you see yourself in five to ten years' time? Do you like to be in footy in some capacity or do you think uh, the non-footy world has more appeal to you? Um, I think initially the non-footy world stepping out of the game for, for maybe six, 12 months is, is going to sit most comfortably with me. I came into this game as a 17-year-old and, you know, if everything goes according to plan, might play a couple more years, which will see me through to sort of a 15-year career, which is a significant amount of time in one industry. So, and particularly in that club environment, um, which I absolutely love and am so passionate about, but I think for my further development and for my life um, outside of the game, it's gonna be important for me to step away for a little while. Um, you asked five or, year, five or 10 years time, I may be back involved with the game at that stage. And, and it is because of my passion that I have for the game. Johnson to the pocket, to him, on cue. This would be a great full stop for the game. Strikes it okay. The purple heart. His fourth for the day, 500th of his career, and the 51st AFL BFL player to reach the magical 500 figure. All right, just finally, uh, if Frio don't win the Premiership this year, who does? Well, the halfway mark, it's a Pretty tough question. I, I think it's sort of starting to get back to the teams that were around the mark last year. Um, 
you know, regardless of how well Essendon uh, are playing and a few other teams that are sort of bobbed up, Sydney and a few others, um, you know, I think it will probably come from Hawthorne, Geelong or Collingwood. All right, Matthew. Thanks for your time on afl.com.au. Good luck for the rest of the season and uh, for beyond. So thank you. Thank you very much.